Welcome back. You're listening to Ask the CIO, sponsored by Equinix on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today is Mark Andrus, the Chief Information Officer at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Now, Mark, before break, we were talking a lot about the cloud. Uh, and one of the things as we talk more about the cloud is the cloud is a piece of this infrastructure. The infrastructure is really around architecture and how you are building it out. And, and the cloud, on-prem, all that has to have kind of that layer of, okay, what does it really mean? What are the guardrails? So the architecture is another area that kind of tags back into it. Talk to me a little bit about what you guys are doing to, to ensure your architecture has standards and, and is meeting the, the needs today right. and the future. Right. Well, about a month after I arrived, um, NGA had, had hired um, from the outside, from industry, uh, a new chief enterprise architect and a new chief data officer, both, both which came um, from industry with a lot of, of background in, in implementation, not just theory, but uh, a lot of real world experience. It, 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 was, it was really exciting um, just as they came in and they brought their families in, there was a real sense of, of willingness to give back understanding uh, both of these were second generation Americans and, and they really wanted to just give back um, and that was really neat. Architecturally over the next probably two years, uh, I've talked a little bit about these high-end mission systems. So think of these big block systems that are needed to do in high, high, end, um, high resolution imagery processing of big data. Those are, those are extremely robust um, extremely high performing, but they're also 10 million lines of code plus per system. And the needs in terms of how you test those means I've got to, you know, th these, are, these are no fail, highly precision, uh, complex systems. But that, that style of system, the way it was designed 10, 20 years ago, does not translate to speed. So um, these next two years, we are going to be shifting the architectural foundation on, on which those systems live to, to decouple and to start to devolve some of those 10 million line of code systems into its service components. Again, we talked about 2005 and, and, and service orientation. Those things are still relevant. Um, and so this will be one of the biggest things we move forward. So now take this idea of hybrid cloud of, as an infrastructure, build on that platform, secure DevOps so that you can move more agilely. And then that third piece is how do, we, how do we decouple these big systems into smaller pieces so that I can add new capabilities quicker without having to do a full end-to-end -end test of a 10 million line of code system. So all of those pieces add together as kind of this, this enabler for this revolution of AI and ML that we've been talking about. Are these systems older? Or are we talking about like 30, 40, 50 year old systems? The COBOL, you know, the old languages? Or, or are they just newer, but they're, mono, they're such a monolith system that breaking them out into components yeah. just makes sense? Or they, both. Are, <laughs> they are not COBOL. That's good news, right? <laughs> but they are, they, they have been running for a while, so decade or decades or more. Um, m being modernized somewhat along the way, but after you get good stable code, a lot of times that business case on how much you want to crack that open becomes a big challenge, I think, for, for everyone. So it's a mix. And the reason you're able to do this, but also wanting to do this, is in, in some ways, you mentioned the hybrid cloud model, but also DevSecOps. If we could, adding new capabilities today of this model of the system, you know, that's a big, we'll use the nasty word, waterfall type project yeah. that could you know, drive you nuts. But if you can break these out into here's separate components that we just want to modernize component A and then we'll modernize component B or add more capabilities. Yep. That's much, that's not eating the apple in one bite. I got all my cliches today, I'm working them all. They're great. <laughs> so what we've been doing since I got here is this next generation of contracts that we've got going out are trying to account for that. So they're trying to marry up the best of our great industry partners and we have a lot of really good ones that have been building and managing these systems. You know, a lot of times these big block systems, they get demonized, yeah. right? But in fact, they're high performance uh, code and they do amazingly proficient functions, you know? Um, so this next set of contracts, we've, we've, we've kind of structured them so that you've got both a operations and sustainment, but written in there, written into the task will be uh, at government directed decoupling of certain components as we direct the uh, vendor to do. 
That's going to allow us to also, as we start to decouple, to look at smaller businesses, uh, uh, newer innovative um, uh, capabilities from uh, the private sector. I talked about the phone technology and imagery. How do I leverage that? Well, I need to break some of these out to allow those smaller vendors to be able to get in and apply their technology, and this is one way we're going to do it. Right, I'm going to try to get ahead of the vendor calls that you're going to get now. Are these <laughs> current acquisitions you have awarded or acquisitions that are coming up or a little bit of both? It's a uh, Most of them are, are just being put out this year. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we've got... Um, so on the on the vendor front, we've we have uh, this year we have we are recompeting our enterprise IT. So think of that as desktop, uh, enterprise management, um, compute and cybersecurity. All of that's getting recompeted, and then our major applications, the big applications, are being recompeted around this model of of, of retain the value from these big systems, but then um, start to decouple them for this more agile service-centric architecture we're heading towards. All so right. a lot of activity on the acquisition front. All right, your phone's going to start ringing, you know that. It already is. You can blame me. All that's, right. That's all right. At the same time, you mentioned uh, the code, and, and, and this tags back to the arch architecture of the cloud, the, under, the decoupling to add to get better capabilities. This also tags back in some ways to this data problem that you're, cha that you're challenged right. with. I mean, NGA is a big data agency. If there's ever a big data agency, it's, right. it's you and like National Weather Service and NOAA and, and, and agencies uh, in a similar vein. Walk me through how you guys are applying data analytics, how is the cloud helping you uh, kind of do more, get more value out of your data? Yeah. So, Jason, I already mentioned the data data core. Mm -hmm. Which is a great idea because, I'm going to interrupt, because I think every agency is facing the same challenge. They are, and um, just like I talked about how we're the sponsor for other agencies to get into the cloud, you don't want to have to recreate that learning. So this idea of the data core that's centrally managed but federated across in, in the work they do allows for that learning, which is probably the most central part of this data management challenge that we've got. How do you use it? Drive requirements to me on how I need to access it. Tell me what tools you need, what domain. That comes, it's better informed by uh, rapid real world learning. Um, so that's been a huge piece. The other area we broke out is called DevCore. So I've got DevCore and DataCore. Uh, the development core was a recognition that perhaps NGA had gone too far in, its, in, in giving up some basic skill sets in terms of software development. And so if you, if you buy in on the principle that data scientists and a data core helps inform your overall architecture, we've, we've, started, we've started bringing in more software developers that are not just doing software development, but they're informing our software development architecture. Right, so the government needs to retain a central role in how we want to develop software. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean we replace the, the large software development efforts going on, but we make sure that we have experts that know how to do it and drive the way we want to do it. So that's been a huge benefit for us. Are, is the dev core very much, uh, I'll use a word that they may not be happy with, but project program managers, but with a software background. So as the vendor comes in and says, oh, we need to do this and do that, they can be like, no, it doesn't make sense and this is why, versus the more traditional project or program manager that may not know enough about software, but can, can kind of make sure you hit milestones along the way. I'm, I'm drawing a fine line. Yeah, so I can't. The dev core are t-shirt wearing, Red Bull drinking, <laughs> hardcore coders. Okay. All right. Good. Good. They are. They take great pride in it. Those are those are the type of people we hire because that's the type of people we need to shape this agile architecture we're talking about. Right. We've got to build an architecture for the future, not not let the all the burden and anchors of these big systems from the past uh, drive that need. So no, we we are they're they're serious coders. And what made you guys at NGA realize that hey we had we maybe the pendulum swung maybe a little too far in terms of the, the in-house skill sets? Um, you know, I wasn't there when the decision was made to, to, to go after it, but what I've observed in the value proposition has been, that I've seen is, um, you know, when we talk about um, the DevOps world and what specific tool sets we need and don't need, these guys, they know it. They're like, this works, this doesn't. Okay. When we talk about the sex side of that, right, the security side of speed and agility, they know how to short circuit 
or what tools you need to produce body of evidence for our CISO, what works and what doesn't. So I've just been very impressed with, um, with the, out, the outcomes that they've been generating that aren't code development, but, but how we code and how to optimize how we code for speed and agility. That's been what's most impressive for me. Roughly how many people are in your dev core? How many people are in your data Small core? Small numbers. Small okay. numbers. So we're not over 100 for data core or dev core. And do you have plans to grow them? Or is it right now you're, you're at a good spot and you'll see where the future takes you? We'll probably, we'll probably grow um, data core a little bit. They've got a running start. I think uh, dev core is still in the 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s. Uh, they, they, have, they have some way to go okay. in terms of numbers that they're going to get to. And the data core, let's back up to that idea too. Are these new people coming to NGA or are they current people that you're retraining? There's a big push obviously for the reskilling, the upskilling of, of uh, federal employees. How, yeah. how are you handling this? It's a little bit of both. So they're bringing in uh, new, new hires that are, that are uh, data science native, and they're mixing that with people that are uh, imagery yeah. science native, right? That's a, that's a good marriage, right? You, you, can't just, you can't just bring in the pure data scientist. You've got to marry it up with that combination of someone who knows the content. Um, when those two get together, they're pretty powerful. Yeah. I can only imagine because it's such a hard job to fill for every agency is, is both the software development side and the data side. You guys are, are doing both, so that's a, it's obviously a good news story. It is a good news story, and if it's okay, I'd mention one more thing. Please, that, yeah, um, do. So. You know, you talk about the, how hard it is to find these, these types of people. One of the things that, that um, uh, NGA, NSA, DIA, uh, they got together as leaders at directorate level, and they said, you know what, we've, we've got to address this talent problem head on, and in particular in some of these areas that we're talking about. So they, they hosted a, a people summit to look at hey, NSA, what are you doing to recruit and retrain talent? And are we doing anything where we create an environment to compete with each other? Um, so I was very, very pleased to see that effort because it's directly supporting these challenges of getting talent right. and keeping talent, especially in the D.C. area. Right, and both, both uh, uh, not just the Intel world, but the civilian world too, same problem. It's so. the same problem. Uh, Mark, let's take a quick break and come back. We can jump into some of the other topics, AL, uh, AI, ML as, as, as an example. Uh, my guest today is Mark Andrus, the Chief Information Officer of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I'm Jason Miller, and you're listening to Ask the CIO, sponsored by Equinix on Federal News Network. <laughs> 